Divine Truth, Spirit Experiences Discussions Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this personal experience from spirits is Matea feels resistance to dealing with childhood abuse, during which Mary channels Matea, a first sphere spirit from Italy who died in the early 1900s from old age, who is angry and resentful about helping spirits suggesting he must feel emotions he has avoided all his life about childhood physical, emotional and sexual abuse. The session was recorded on the 8th of August 2017 from 3.30 p.m. in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. G'day again. I'm here still with Mary. We're, we're continuing our discussion with some spirits who have wanted to come and show you how raw their emotions are. And by now you should be seeing that they're quite raw. We've had a discussion with Rodney so far and Susan as well as Sonia. And, uh, the last uh, spirit we were going to talk to is Matthew. But before we do, Mary and I just wanted to have a bit of a discussion about the last uh, two spirits, yeah. uh, Rodney and Susan, who okay. came. So I wanted to ask you about um, if you feel that their condition is um, similar to people who come to uh, to the assistance group because this is how this all started isn't it sonia was talking about yeah. people who came to the assistance well in group. some ways they're ahead of in what way most of the people who come to the assistance groups because they're so honest and yeah because they're so honest about yeah. how they feel and yeah. most people who come to the assistance groups or who watch the assistance groups are not very honest about how they really feel yes but these are the kind of feelings that i feel from them but yeah but they're just not very honest about them Whereas uh, particularly Rodney, very honest about what he was feeling. Yes. And and this is a very powerful part of opening up to having that longing for truth that mm -hmm. Sonia wanted to discuss with us right at the beginning of this whole series of conversations. Yeah. Having this um, this longing for truth, and is a part a part of it is actually just being raw with how you actually feel yeah. right now. That's a part of you generating an honesty for truth. It's an honest, it's a desire to be truthful about how you feel. Yeah. And this is where I feel the majority of people, if not all the people at different times who come to our groups, very rarely display that kind of honesty. Yeah. Very rare. It's, sometimes you see it and yeah. sometimes you'll see it in the recordings. Yeah. Uh, where that's that kind of raw honesty. There were a few moments in the last uh, few groups where different people in their questions displayed that kind of raw honesty in their questions, but it is a very rare thing to see. Mm. Yeah, and I think in channeling them, I could feel a difference, uh, say, between Rodney and between Susan, who we just spoke with, mm. uh, in that... Because Susan sort of believed herself to be more advanced than Rodney, but actually Rodney is more advanced than Susan. Yes, mm. and I could feel that Susan... Um, Obviously, the opening to have even uh, someone speak with her was about her own daughter. So that's the only chink in her opinion that she isn't completely right about everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas it feel, felt to me that Rodney was more in a process of feeling like, got to give some things up, but I really don't want to. So he's already kind of been through a process where people have educated him enough to see that. Well, he's not that think? convinced that he right. needs to give them I up. Can't, but, I can't really remember. But his, his attitude towards the truthful expression of how he feels mm -hmm. was different than Susan's. And this is why I say he's a bit more advanced. Yeah. Because his attitude was he was being very truthful that he's very angry mm -hmm. and very truthful that, you know, he's very annoyed with what he gets told. But also he was being truthful about the fact that, you know, he wanted to get to his wife and he wanted to get to his children but couldn't. Mm -hmm. So so he's being very truthful about a lot of these things, right? Mm -hmm. whereas, whereas she was being less truthful with herself about many of these things. Her, yeah. her true raw emotional condition until we had the short discussion right at the end. Yeah. And then she started to become a lot more truthful about her real emotional Condition, condition what's really going on inside of her yes because there's a but she didn't want to display it so no she wasn't willing to be truthful about it that was the difference i felt must be because i felt like she yeah. she had a lid on everything she was willing to be verbally honest about her what her opinions were and how angry she was and, and how angry yeah. really 
just how she felt like everyone's being insulting. insulting. Yeah. <laughs> Not even that Not she was really. angry, really, yeah. was she? Yeah. She just felt offended, uh, yeah. indignant, sort of, yeah. Whereas yeah. He, he was more honest about many of the feelings that he was having. That he was having, yeah. But he's, he's probably going to struggle uh, a bit with the sadness mm -hmm. because it, most, men, uh, most men do struggle more with sadness than most women do. Mm -hmm. So once she has a breakthrough through this sort of very resistive place that she was in, she might find she progresses rapidly because she will go through if she lets herself go through the sadness. So, so you know, it, it's not a competition. It's an individual process that yeah. everyone has to go yeah. through. But, but your feeling is that it's quite this level of resistance and this level of feeling insulted or attacked or like what what's being sort of that God's way is basically unreasonable. <laughs> I suppose that's probably what I feel in the people who come to our groups as well. But yes. but as you said, not as honest about it. No, no. In fact, very few are honest at all about it. Yeah. 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 And that and that unless you start with that kind of level of personal honesty about things, you really are not going to progress very much on God's path. Yes. Of course, God, there are moments in a person's life, again, like we mentioned, that we get really honest and raw about things yeah yeah um but we need to desire it and to sustain yeah, it hey? to sustain that's it. what sonia was trying to talk about <laughs> being is sustaining or staying right. in that state of being that level of honest and emotional yeah. and yeah. if we just contrast for a moment obviously sonia didn't talk to about her real raw emotions from in the first sphere she was in the third sphere when mm. she talked about the big emotion that she needed to work through, but but you could see that she was willing to sustain contact with that emotion. But mm -hmm. she had times when she was withdrawing still, mm -hmm. and that was even in the third sphere she was going through that process. Yeah, mm -hmm. but she kind of had her eye on a, an overall target, didn't yes. she? That kept her kind of engaged. Yes. Yeah. Her Sonia has a desire for God. Mm. which is not really present in Rodney or Susan yet. No. But yeah. if they can get onto the emotional path, yes, then the desire for God will develop over time. Yeah, yeah. it'd be great. Mm. Yeah, it'd be really mm. good. Mm. And something um, one of our recorders <clears throat> was just clarifying with us from the overall discussion was about how false beliefs are released. Yes. Uh, because obviously our whole discussion is showing that we all carry this myriad of false beliefs that are affecting the way that we view things, the way that we interact, the way mm. that we live. Thousands of them, literally. All over the place mm -hmm. <laughs> inside of us. Mm -hmm. And um, she was just asking what that process of releasing the false beliefs is like. And Well, it starts like we've seen with the anger and rage about having to release it and feeling annoyed that it is there and feeling that it's even wrong to suggest that it's a problem in the first place and yeah yeah <laughs> and all of that right the way through the fear that uh that so rodney some, was touching oh, yes. up against yeah you know this fear of like, every time he sort of gets beyond the anger that all he feels underneath is quite a large amount of terror or fear mm -hmm. and then into the grieving process that you know, is naturally related to why we have those the anger and the fear in the first place yeah. And we've been through that with it. You, you think how many emotional conversations we've had with groups mm -hmm. about emotions. Yeah. You, you can see that I've, I've always talked about those particular processes. Yes. And everybody who listens generally thinks that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hmm. And yeah, and but we were saying to Lena just about, and she could relate to it from her own experience, when you allow the emotion to flow, when the false belief is being confronted, mm -hmm. either through Which is the best time. God's laws operating or someone speaking with you or whatever, if you allow that process to happen, yep. you become less attached to the false belief. Yes. Uh, and over time, gradually, you can begin to view it as a false belief rather than the truth. Exactly. Your life changes. So you start by fighting it. You think it's true. Yeah. So you, you can see in Rodney's case, he believes being a man is riding a Harley and... Yeah. You know. <laughs> and it's interesting, isn't it, that, you know, there's probably not many Harley riders who come to our... I don't know if he's actually a Harley. I should <laughs> conv convince that. <laughs> it's just a... <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 
No, I don't know that it was a Harley. No, I don't think it was. But But that is the image. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It was a kind of stereotypical image, isn't it? Yeah. But there are a lot of men who come to our groups who are very attached to certain other things that they think make make them a man and a good man. Yeah. 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 And it's a huge problem having to give them up. Yeah. For most, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Most have not begun. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, so let's... Okay, so now we come to Matthew, Matthew. don't we? Who's another guy who obviously wants to talk to us about some of his feelings, (laughs) which is great. Yeah. Yeah. So Matthew feels a little different to me, had Mm -hmm. a little different time. Let me have a cough. Yep. Hi there. Howdy, Matthew. So I've been asked to come and speak to you about where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being brave. Mm Mm-hmm. Can you give me a bit of background about sure. how long you've been in the spirit world? I've been in the spirit world 100 years. Yep. And I lived to pretty old age when I was on earth. How old were you? I was uh, in my early 90s. Oh, good, good, innings, good innings, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Obviously not the innings God designed, though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where, what country did you live, Macy? Yeah, I lived in Europe. Yep. I lived in Italy. Italy, yep. So, so you're being kind to us by calling yourself Matthew. Yes, that's what I was about to say. I just, yeah. I don't feel so attached to, to my name, but it's kind of a rough translation anyway. Yes, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But I suppose I'm being asked to speak with you because uh, there is a part of my life that I'm really struggling with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, So when I was actually a small boy on earth, I was abused Mm -hmm. um, physically and emotionally and sexually. Mm -hmm. And um, it's taken me a long time to even talk about that Mm -hmm. with anyone. And it's a a hard thing to talk about. Yeah. Mm. And the thing that I'm finding very hard to come to terms with is the fact that it wasn't my fault Mm -hmm. or that it wasn't a normal part of life or something that I deserved. Yeah, because the abusers always tell you that you deserve it. Mm. They always imply that through their actions. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose the harder thing for me, even harder than acknowledging what you've just said, that somebody made me feel like that, is that I've been comfortable for a long time with the pain of blaming myself. Yeah. Yeah. For... Over a hundred years. Yeah, it's a long, long time. A hundred and <clears throat> seventy or eighty years. Uh, so it's nearly two hundred years. Yeah. Mm. I've lived with the pain of blaming myself and I still prefer that to the pain that I feel will come when I acknowledge that it. Yeah, that it wasn't your fault. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a very difficult thing, Matthew, to to come to terms with that because it, the reason why it's so difficult is good because all abusers always make the suggestion to the people they abuse that the reason why they're abusing those people is because the people who are getting abused deserve it. And so I understand that, mm. but Why I still don't on? want to mm. accept that. Mm-hmm. I see it's true. Mm-hmm. I see it's true. And I can even visit back to my life mm-hmm. sort of and. I've been helped to see what happened and why the people did what they did. Mm. But I don't want to feel 
that that's true. That that's true. That it wasn't because something you did of something I did, or that it's something that every child should expect to experience as a normal part of living. Yeah. Can you see the reason why you don't want to? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't. It seems another class of pain. Mm -hmm, it is, it is. To, that comes, <clears throat> uh, threatens to come up in me when I consider that. Can I, it, can I help explain a little about what's going on? Yes. Is that all right? Well, I think I understand it. Well, I just don't want to do it. Yeah, I, I don't know if you understand the reason why you're finding it so difficult. Right? I don't want the pain. No, it's not the pain you don't want, it's the fear you don't want. I don't, yes, I don't understand that. Yeah, if I can explain. Usually abuse, uh, 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 when we're children, both emotion, emotional, physical and sexual abuse, particularly with all three combined, we have so much fear in almost, in so many areas of our life as a result. And we're terrified of the persons who abused us. Do you follow? So we get very, very scared of them. We're afraid that they'll re, you know, re-abuse us somehow if we acknowledge that what they did was wrong. Right. And, and this is something that you then, that then causes a resistance in us to accept that what they did was wrong. Like, so there's a, the resistance is actually the resistance to feeling terror. Terror so, is an emotion. I, and every person who's been abused as a child eventually will have to feel it in order to release it. You follow? Now, you will get a lot of help to feel it once you allow yourself to feel it. But I don't, I don't feel. The only thing I feel I'm afraid of is the extra pain. It feels like more pain when I think that it wasn't something that had to happen to me. That feels like extra pain. I, I see I don't want that pain. I don't understand what you mean about being afraid. Those people can't hurt me. But you don't feel they can't hurt you. So you're saying that I don't understand what you're saying. You're saying that no, I'm afraid they'll hurt me if I feel like that no. it's there, they were wrong. No, you're afraid that you're afraid that the reason why you experience these particular things happening to you is because God felt you were wrong. You felt... What? Sorry. If, if I can explain more, more fully. When we're brought up with a, in a family that's abusive, we always attribute to God what the family did. And so in an, order, in, a, in an effort to avoid further pain from the family. And we do this emotionally so that we can maintain some semblance of control over our emotions while we're getting abused. In other words, we get abused, we get hurt, and we learn fairly early on in the abuse that the more emotional we are, the more the abuser enjoys it. And so we try to detune more and more emotionally from the actual abuse. Do you follow me? And what's that got to do with God? Yeah, let me, let me explain. But you, you follow me up to this point. Yeah, it's hard. I don't really want to be here at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's the emotion you feel? Why don't you want to be here? Oh, I feel angry. Okay. That's it. And why do you feel angry? Can you, can you feel, feel your I, anger? I, it's okay to feel it. Yeah, I just don't... I thought I was coming to just tell you where I'm at. Yeah. I don't... That's okay. I, I'm happy I, for you to just tell me where you're at and, and leave if that's what you want to do. But what I'm discussing with you will help you if you want 
the assistance. It's very, it's great that you've been honest about where you're at. So that... I just feel I can't do this. I don't, I can't do what? You don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. God will help you do this. And in fact, God wants to help you do this. Right? I don't believe that. No, that, this is what I'm saying. You don't believe it because of what happened to you. You feel that you were left alone without God while these things happened to you. No one came to your rescue when you were a child. No one around you rescued you from this situation when you were a child. And so now you sort of feel like, well, that's all God's fault. It's not just the persons who did it. It's, it's God's fault. It's everybody's fault. Somebody should have rescued me. Well, and that's I don't think it's my fault. No, thinking it's your fault helps you avoid this other emotion. Oh, okay. Because the other emotion that's feels what, more painful. That's what feels more painful, to give up this idea that it's my fault. You, you feel that it, you, you want to feel it was your fault, you want to believe it was your fault, because internally you don't really believe it's your fault. You believe that somebody should have rescued you and nobody did, and it feels terrible to think that nobody even wanted to. You see? Yes. And this is the reason why you feel like you feel. And you also feel that God should rescue you, and this is why it brings up some anger when I talk about it, because it feels like, why didn't he? You know, he had the power. Why couldn't he? What, what, what's going on there? What, why did he make out that I deserved it? That's what I feel, finished up feeling like, because no one rescued me from it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's very hard to follow, but I think I understand. Yeah. Well, if you, it's hard. I don't even think of God as a powerful God. No, no. You feel he's powerless almost, don't you? Like, he, he didn't help you and he could have, is the feeling, and he didn't. And I feel like it took me so long here to even acknowledge what happened to me. Yeah. To even just be able to say it, to mm. know that it happened, mm. to know it, in, like to emotionally know it yeah. without and now but can I you just, can you see though how many people so have been trying to help to you work. recognize that for so long yeah and i'm not in, i'm not ungrateful to those people and no, no, i'm not suggesting you are what i'm saying is that you've had help all the way along from uh, people who want to help you but you can't be you can't help somebody who doesn't acknowledge a problem exists you see do you see what I'm saying? And so you're going to get, you're going to receive a tremendous amount of help as long as you could acknowledge the problem exists. And God's been waiting for you to acknowledge the problem exists. Do you follow? Now, all the time God's been waiting, he's been trying to help you to see the problem exists. You've had person after person come to you and ask you about these things. You've had different attraction events that have shown you that where other people have been abused and come to talk to you about it and things like that. You've had heaps of events like this, right? Pull through your life in the spirit state, trying to help you acknowledge what's happened. You follow? So God wants yeah. to help you acknowledge what's happened so then God can help you deal with it. And you don't have to deal with it all alone. But you believe you have to. This is one of the things the abusers do to you. Is they? I'm just angry. Like, why does it all? I never see the end that I have to. There's more to look at. What I'm saying to you is that God will help you look at everything and will help you get through this as fast as it possibly can be done. You've got to let him help you. And at this stage, you're not. And that's all you've got to do, nothing else. You don't have to do anything else. Just let him help you. Do you understand what I'm saying? The reason why it's taken so long is because you haven't let anybody help you. And partly it's because you don't believe you deserve any help. Or that's what the abusers taught you, would be more accurate to say that you don't deserve any help, you see. 
that's not true, you do. You deserve all the help in the world. And there's people around you who've wanted to help you all the way along. There's a whole series of things they can do to help you. They can even take you to a place where they can remove some of the problems that have happened, things that have happened to you. Right? But they can only do that if you're willing. That's the only way they can do it. That's what is their limitation. Their limitation is whether you want to or not. Do you see? And if you don't want to, and what you've been expressing up to now is that you don't really want to. Right. It's then, hard to want to yeah. feel so bad. I feel so ashamed and I feel so alone and I feel so disgusting and yeah. I feel so much more pain. And they're going to help you with all of these feelings, all of them. And God can help you with all of these feelings very rapidly, but you've got to want to let you've got to let him help you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And partly you haven't wanted to because you see it as just more pain. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I've been through things that you've been through, right? So I know I know what it's like to go through them. I feel Jeez. so angry as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that too. I understand that too. The key is just let yourself to feel those things and let yourself accept the help to go through these things. It'll be much faster if you can let yourself be helpless. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? If you keep holding it to yourself, you know, if you think of the last hundred years, You've just been holding it really close to your chest, haven't you? Holding it, like not telling anybody, not revealing. But now I feel like you're telling me I've done it wrong and I've, I've worked hard. To hold on to it, yeah. No, to try to come to terms with it. No, you've worked hard to hold on to it. Coming to terms with it is letting it go. That's what I'm suggesting. And you can be angry with me, that's fine. Right? But what I'm saying is still true. What I've found is that if you, ho if you hold on to it like you've been holding on to it, trying to come to terms with it like you have, it's not the way to go forward. To, to really come to terms with it requires the emotional release of it and the willingness to emote. All you need to do is be willing emotionally to release it and God will help you do the rest. You'll get... As I said, a huge amount of help to do the rest from all sorts of people around you who want to help. But it just means being willing to go through the initial phases of that emotionally, accepting the help, in other words. Do you see what I'm saying? I just feel like you're telling me that I'm not good enough. Like everyone's always told me I don't do it enough. I'm not good enough. It's a problem in me that it happened to me. It's a problem in me that it's not fixed in me. It's always my fault. And and and, I'm and I saying, just feel like... I'm not saying, I know that's how you feel, but that's not what I'm saying. Abuse is always completely the fault of the abuser. <laughs> completely. Yeah, I just feel so mixed up. I feel so mixed up. Yeah. About whose fault it is. Yeah, sometimes you think it's your own, and sometimes you think it's somebody else's or God's or whatever. I just feel like it's so much my fault that I can't handle it when somebody else tells me that I'm doing something else wrong. Yeah, but see what I'm saying to you? You believe it's your fault. And what I'm saying to you is definitely it is not your fault. And you don't want to give up that it was your fault. Do you see what I'm saying? And this is what you need to give up if, if anybody's going to be able to help you. You need to give up that it's your fault and start seeing the, no, the fault lay with the people who abuse me. Do you see? That's all that needs to be done. If there's, a, if there's anything that's caused you to be in this pain for a, such a long period, it's only that, that you haven't wanted to see the truth that it's not your fault. Okay. So why does it feel like I'm going to be in more pain? 
Well, there'll be an emotional outburst once you recognise who <laughs> is to blame. Does that make sense? You, you'll cry a fair bit about who's to blame and that you didn't deserve it. But, but once you get into that state, then God and all of the spirits around you want to help you, can help you. And there's things they can do. They can help you go through processes where they can take some of this burden away from you quite rapidly, but only if you can see that it wasn't your fault. While in the last hundred years you've wanted to blame yourself, and it's not your fault you even did that. That was caused by the people who abused you. That's how they, that's what they do to abuse victims. They try to make you believe that it's all your fault, and it's not. Any sense? Yeah. But you've been very brave coming to have a chat with us about it. And, and, the, and you're letting yourself feel what you feel, which is great. Right? When you're angry, be angry. If you're sad, be sad. That's all great. Okay. But don't keep holding on to the fact that it's all your fault, because it's not. The only thing that's delayed your progress is you believing that it's all your fault. Do you see what I'm saying? And this was a belief that was implanted in you. Yeah, through the years. I, that's why I just feel angry because I feel like I've got to give up this thing. I feel like I'm being blamed for having this belief and that I'm being punished for having this belief. No. When, as you say, it was taught to me to have this belief. Yeah. And now I feel like, yeah, I suppose I feel afraid to give up this belief. You do. And, and, Yet I feel like I'm being told that I'm going to suffer until I give up this belief. And it just feels like, what more does the world want from me? Mm -hmm. I've got to do so much to get over this thing. No, you've only got to do one thing to get over this. One thing. It, what? Give up the belief that you're to blame. It's a belief that you were fed with. It's not even yours, really, in the end. It was a, what the abusers put in you. But you need to let it... If you keep blaming yourself, <laughs> it's very hard to help you. Do you see? That's all you've got to do, just give up this one thing. You're afraid to give it up, as you say, for a lot of... And honestly, at this stage, you don't even know why you're afraid to give it up. And you'll find out why once you give it up, why you were so afraid to give it up, you follow. But, but God and our spirit friends can help you, but they can't help you while you tell them they can't help you. And what, the way you're telling them they can't help you is you're telling them that you were to blame when you're not. Do you see what I'm saying? And they want to tell you, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not to blame. You're not even to blame for having this belief that you are to blame. You're not even to blame for that. The only thing you need to do is go through the process of giving up this belief so that people can assist you. Make sense? That's all that needs to happen. And I know it's been a, lot, a very, very hard hundred years for you. A very hard hundred years. It just hurts so much. It does. But, you know, this is where God can help you a lot. God can get so much help to you that in the end, in a short period of time, it won't hurt at all. Anymore. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. And the key is to have some trust in God's goodness here and let, just go through the process of, like they suggest, giving up the belief that you're to blame. And you're going to have to cry about it and 
you're going to be angry about it initially and you're probably going to have to cry about it. And once you give up the belief, now there's a huge amount of help that you can get because you want the help and you won't keep on holding on to this false belief, you know, that you're to blame and you don't deserve any help. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Sexy help. Yes. But it's a very hard thing to deal with, I understand, Matthew. And and you feel, there's a lot of fear in there, and at this stage you don't even realise what the fear is about, about having to give up this belief. Yeah? And that's okay. But if you can give up, go through the process of giving up the belief, your life will get substantially very, better very rapidly. You won't have to live like this anymore, where you're constantly terrified of, of what happened to you, you see. Yeah. Mm. Mateo, that's my name, really. Mateo? Yeah. Mm. Pleased to meet you, huh? I know these things are tough. When I was living on Earth before, I was tortured and abused quite frequently and very hard to do with it when you're a child. Very hard. So I understand what it's like. And the hard, one of the hardest emotions to give up is the feeling that somehow we're to blame, right? It's a very hard emotion to give up. I've had to give that up myself. It's a very hard emotion to give up. And abusers love it because they, you know, they can always blame you for what they did to you then. Mm. Okay, I've got it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for being brave. Yeah. <clears throat>
that every time you're confronted, this is what fe the feeling is inside yeah. of you. Yeah. yeah. And that's the magic, isn't it? If we can let that happen. Yeah. yeah. And that's the magic. And that's the, and that if, if people allow themselves to do that, then listening to the assistance groups will have some benefit to them mm. and they'll find their lives will change substantially very quite rapidly mm. and on top of that they'll find that their emotional life is quite topsy-turvy for a while which they should stop having some judgment of as we see in each mm. each one of our persons who came had some judgment of their emotional State. inconsistency yeah. their emotional ups and downs yeah. And because of that judgment, they found it a bit more difficult to actually process the emotion. Mm. But that also is an emotion that has to go, the judgment, you know. Yeah. And and they the examples we had this afternoon were, so we had Sonia and her beliefs about what it means to give and be a good person. Yes. Rodney, who his beliefs about what it means to be a man and how to uh, deal with things that scare you. Yes. Susan. Susan, who had the feelings about what it means to be a, a mother. good mother, <laughs> a good <laughs> member of society, a strong person. Yes. And Matthew, and, and she had to give up about what it means to be a, a good and in control. Yes. And Matthew had stuff about really wanting to resist the truth about what had happened and how it had happened, didn't he? Wanting to well, it was, it, in his case, it was more about not wanting to give up his bad opinions of himself. Yeah, because he felt that that, that would make his life even more painful. Yes, than what it currently is. So yeah. that's really fear about future pain. Mm -hmm. And most people who have been abused mm -hmm. have high levels of fear about potential future pain. Mm. And so they um, hold on to hold those. on to their current pain, yep. and often live in their current pain for many, many years, sometimes hundreds of years, mm -hmm. um, living in their current pain because they're worried that if they give up their current pain, they'll have even more future pain. Yeah, and that yeah. and that and that's just a terror. Yeah, and all abuse victims are terrified at that level, mm. and it's just a, an emotion again that needs to be gone through. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So lots of different ways that people were holding on to things and they had resistance to mm -hmm. different beliefs about themselves or what it meant to be a certain good person or what yeah. it meant to manage fear and pain. And I suppose that is very uh, a good um, cross-section cross -section. of often what, you know, what happens of in what our groups. Happens, yeah. Yeah. Of course, there's a lot more variety in the groups. <laughs> yeah. the more, every person has their own unique story. Yes. But, but you could see each time in these discussions that each person had levels of resistance some of which they were getting through and some mm. of which they weren't but but interestingly enough if we examine all four cases that we've had today every one of them was willing to feel some emotion yeah. and every one of them was willing to be truthful about the emotion they were feeling yes and that's not what we observe in no. our groups yes and that's the start that's that's where the magic can happen isn't Correct. it that's where that's where true progress happens is yeah. is regularly acknowledging where you're at and regularly yeah like going through the process of feeling about those things emotionally i shouldn't yeah. call it magic because it's not magic <laughs> well it, it, it's magical in some ways it's like uh, it's anything that god designed generally is quite magical <laughs> But it is a scientific fact yeah. as well. So it's not just magic, it's science. It's proper science. You know, this is why our celestial spirit friends spend a lot of time helping people go through the process because it yeah. is. It's a proven. It's a proven it's method. Foolproof method. It's a foolproof and proven method of, of releasing past trauma. Yeah. Uh, or even trauma that we've caused ourselves. Mm. You know, in some cases, you know, like in Susan's case, most of her trauma. She, she finished up herself. causing herself. Yeah. Of course, uh, a lot of it came from um, belief systems that were encouraged yeah, in her family and yeah. her childhood. Yeah. So no one's ever fully, and this is the other thing too, as I feel that a lot of times we believe that, oh, it's all my fault, it's all my fault, but it's never all your fault. Mm. Or it's all someone else's fault. <laughs> or it's all someone else's, and it's never all their fault either. It's, yeah. uh, you know, we, the way injury occurs to the planet um, is such that we are we all have some culpability at some level 
Mm. And uh, all of us need to take steps to to address it. Yeah. 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 But I think that's a good uh, precursor to some of our questions and answers that we're going to ask about the group. Mm -hmm. And hopefully um, it's given people some ideas about what, if the truth is really hitting them, you what it will be like. What it's going to feel like. It's yeah. going to feel quite a lot more traumatic than what most people are going through now. <laughs> most people are going through now the resistance, which is this uh, place of sort of numbing out, zoning out, tuning yeah. out, getting angry and, and resistive and not really truly feeling anything. Yeah. Uh, blaming uh, myself for raising issues mm. or completely being disagreeable or dis in disagreement with the issues being raised because they don't want to face it. That's yeah. what is really going on. And not being honest even about that. Yeah. Or some people I notice are sort of in this sort of addictive um, facade of being emotional about what you're saying, but, but, it's, but not, it's, not, it's not touching their heart and there's no real change. Yeah. It's not a real change. They like the drama, yeah. which is an addiction in itself. Yes. So yeah. that none of the people here who came today were were in a dramatization of their feelings. No. They were all in their raw feelings. Yeah. yeah. Which is a completely different state. Yeah. yeah, and I'd like to thank them for coming and doing that. Yeah, it's all very all brave. very brave, particularly yeah. our last uh, our last three. Uh, so, very yeah. brave. So it's a lot easier for Sonia because she's all over it. Yeah. <laughs> whereas yeah, the others whereas are when you're going through it, it's a lot more raw themselves. and it's a lot more difficult to speak about. Yes. Um, and uh, and as a result, very few mediums on earth ever, ever have conversations like that. And the reason why is because most people on earth want to believe that once you're in the spirit world, everything's good now. <laughs> everything's happy now. You, you're all fixed now. Yes. Yeah. Everything's now perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and unfortunately, it's a, it's a terrible mistake to believe these things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we will we will sometime soon have a discussion about mediumship, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're preparing that in the process yeah. of preparing it now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we'd like to thank all of you for uh, bearing with us. I think we've been two, three, three, or perhaps even close to four hours of that little session together, and hopefully you've learnt a lot about how, how what it's actually like to actually be truthful emotionally, mm -hmm. and also listen to what Sonia had to say about her analysis of, uh, of, of what's been happening with the groups and what many of you who have attended have uh, been doing since you've been at the groups. And we're quite aware that these things have been happening for you because uh, we can see through the general lack of desire for more truth <laughs> is, a, is a good indication that the, many of you are really struggling with, with accepting the previous truth you've already received. And isn't that um, because so many are labouring under this belief that more truth means more pain. Yeah. And 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 all that God's trying to do with uh, helping you expose truth is to alleviate pain. In fact, it is to help you be happy. And I, I can't emphasize that enough. The the more we bottle up the pain inside of ourselves and deny that it's there, the more unhappiness we create for ourselves, not less. And and it's very very important to go through with as least resistance as we possibly can go through the process of releasing this pain so that we are, are capable of being happy in our future. So, yeah. And that's notwithstanding whether you want to have a relationship with God or not <laughs> as to whether you do that. That's just something that's going to be a requirement if you ever want to be really happy. So mm -hmm. these are things that need to happen anyway. And obviously, if we can get God's help to do these things, it's going to be much better. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. For so, yeah, so we'd like to thank you for your time and thank Mary for her mediumship today. Um, it was quite very realistic. I think the audience will agree when they, <laughs> when they watch that. Uh, very realistic when you're channeling uh, these people. It's, they get to get a good feel about the emotional state that the people are in. Obviously, the people who are dealing with their own resistances and stuff, that's that's even easier for me to channel because that's, where this that's a less been working through or yeah, closer to where it's you've been closer to my, yeah. my state. Yeah. So, uh, so it was wonderful having that sort of experience to see what it's like, and and uh, and we haven't done all this to scare anything, scare you or anything like <laughs> We're we're trying to demonstrate to you the importance of truthfully seeing and truthfully being what you really feel. Mm. And that, that is such an essential thing if you wish to progress. 
So hopefully that's a good closing for Sonia's, uh, Sonia, the reason why Sonia wanted to come and talk to us today. And uh, we hope that you've learned some lessons from uh, this discussion, even if you may not have enjoyed it so much. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll catch you at another time. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. See you later.